So what is a function? Okay, so a function is essentially a relationship between two variables. It has a few restrictions to it, but that's basically what it is. It's a relation between two variables, and we have essentially a function does something to a number, an input, to give us an output. Okay, so our, our mathematical functions that we're used to, we first start off with the plus function, with plus something, minus something, we start, we ended up with times something, divide by something, those represent functions. So divide by two can be a function. But we've now kind of, you know, uh, gone to more complicated functions, of, like things like squared, okay, squaring things. So we're now going to say that the square, squaring something is a function. And we start using this notation, f of x, g of x. And there's this relationship between the input and the output. So we input something, we do a function to it, we get the output. So that's the relationship. There's basically a relationship between the input and output. And when we talk about functions, we want to make sure that there's actually some constraints to that because there could be problems if we don't. So one of the constraints is that a function can only have one output for any input. Okay, so we can't put, you know, different, uh, put in an x and get two different y values. So what does that look like? Okay, so it looks like this on a graph. If I have an input x, there's only one output here, y. So if I draw a vertical line here, it only crosses this function once. And all through this function, it can only cross the function once, this vertical line. So this is a, a kind of a graphical way to show this property. A function can only have one y value for any x value, or only one output for any one input. So this one here does not pass a function test, okay? So the first one is a function. This is not a function because if I put in an x value, there is one, two, three different outputs, okay? So this does not pass our function test. So this is what we call a vertical line test, and it's basically showing this property. It's a geometric or visual way to see that the function can only have one output y value for any input x value. Now the Opposite is not true, okay? So we, the function can have two different x's that give us the same y's. So I can have, you know, x here and another x here. So I'll call that x1 and x2. And they can have the same y value. There's no restriction on That's okay. Okay, so two inputs can have the same output. So it would look like this, okay? We can have x, x1 and x2 and we can get output like that, that's okay, okay? What is not okay is if I get something like this. If I have one x going into a function and giving us two y's, so there's our f of x, and I cannot get y two different y's, okay? So this is not okay, that's, okay, so a diagram that looks like this is fine, one that looks like this is not okay, it doesn't pass our function test. Okay, so we can say it in words like this, we can see it in visually like this, and we can see in our charts like this. Okay, so what is a function? What's not a function algebraically? Okay, it's kind of hard to tell, but we can maybe get some, some hints with this. So here I have y equals x plus 1 squared. Does this pass our vertical line test? Well, if we know what the graphs look like, then we can kind of visually in our head determine whether this is a function or not. So this is really a parabola that looks like that. Yeah, it passes our vertical line test. I can draw a vertical line. Okay, and that vertical line does not cross that function more than once anywhere I drag that line. Okay, so it passes our vertical line test. So that is a function. Okay, this one here is hard to tell. Because uh, if I don't know what this graph looks like, I'm not really sure it's a function or not. So I can actually do this. I can try something here. I can solve for y. Because normally my equations are y equals. And if I solve for y, I get this. y equals plus minus square root x. That plus minus is an indication that it's not a function. Because if I put the number, for example, 1 in here, my output could be 1 or negative 1. 
Okay, so I end up with this. So 1 into this function, I get two outputs like this. Positive 1 gets a positive 1 output and negative 1 output. Yeah, that does not pass my function test. So this is not a function. Okay, now another indication of this is that we don't need to necessarily do all this work if we understand that, well, if I have even powers on x, that's generally an indication that it's not a function. Okay, so an even power of x, oh, sorry, an even power on y, let me clarify that, even power on y usually means it's not a function. Okay, in fact, it's not a function. The odd powers on y are a little bit problematic because most of them are not functions, but they can at times be functions. So we're not going to generalize that. But definitely even powers on y are not functions. So even, I'm going to write that down, even power on y are not functions. Okay, because anytime we undo this even power on y, we're going to get a plus minus. When we, as soon as we do that, we know we don't have a function.